there is an appropriate time to use carbs to build muscle and to use a different style of eating to burn fat. Before, we just kind of had to guess it and honestly take some playbooks out of the bodybuilding world for a while because maybe they've been doing things right for the last 30 years. But now there's a study published in Advances in Medical Sciences that actually compared when certain diets build muscle versus when certain diets burn fat. And it's amazing because it gives us a context and it gives us almost a playbook. So by the end of this video, I'll give a breakdown of when you should be eating more carbs, when you should be maybe cranking the carbs down and increasing the protein and fats. It spells it out for us perfectly so we can get the most muscle building and the most fat loss. So let's go ahead and break it down. Now the study was interesting because it took a look at well-trained people, people with similar backgrounds, with similar training experiences at similar weights and muscle mass. So important because you can't compare someone that's been training for 10 years to someone that is obese and has never trained. You're gonna get entirely wildly different results. So this study shows us a lot. After today's video, I did put a link for our sponsor, which is Seed. It's a 25% off discount link for Seed. This is a daily symbiotic. I don't like probiotics. I think most of them are watered down garbage. And when you look at the literature, it's usually kind of weak. But Seed is interesting. They really do publish clinicals themselves. Their science and evidence is awesome. And their technology is cool. So it's a capsule inside of a capsule. So you're potentially getting multiple stages of delivery. Prebiotic breaking down first, followed by the probiotic breaking down further down in the digestive system and potentially colonizing better further down. I noticed big differences, like within the first five, six days, but really in the first couple of weeks is when I really noticed a difference in different areas, like my performance, my mood, things where the gut microbiome does matter. So that's a 25% off discount link. I do highly, highly recommend that you check them out. That link is down below. So what they did with these subjects that had very similar training experiences is they had them go on either a high carb, low fat diet or a low carb, high fat diet for 15 weeks. Okay, so decent length of time, they had them do the exact same resistance training program. Okay, but what they did do is they made sure that they did not do any other kind of training that would act as like a, a variable within the results. So let's just jump right to what they ultimately found because this is what's interesting. First and foremost, surprisingly, they found that when subjects went low carb, they ended up having about a 10% drop in performance, in their strength. And that's like 10% plus in their squat specifically, which is the one that was really affected. That's not very good news for low carb at first, but we do need to unpack it a little bit more because so much more of this makes sense later on. Additionally, with the low carb, high fat group, there's a 5.49 kilogram total body mass loss more than the high carb, low fat. So they lost a lot more mass, but this needs to be contextualized. We need to understand more because what they did find is that the high carb, low fat group also lost weight. They lost two kilograms of fat compared though to the low carb, high fat, which trumped it at almost seven kilograms of total body fat lost. Here's the caveat though. The low carb, high fat group, although they lost way more fat, they also lost two kilograms of muscle. The high carb group ended up losing a little bit of fat, but gained five kilograms of muscle. So at first you're like, well, I'm just gonna preserve my muscle, go high carb all the way. Well, we need to understand more because when you actually look at the particulars of the study, it makes some sense. And this is not coming from like a low carb perspective. I'm not trying to say you should do low carb because what I'm actually gonna find in this video and what I'm gonna explain to you is gonna probably surprise you. Ultimately though, the subjects were only eating 100 grams of protein per day and they weighed 85 kilograms. That's barely above the already dismal recommended daily allowance of protein, which is 0.8 grams per kilogram. Like I would never recommend that. I almost always recommend a minimum we double that. So we have a problem to begin with, right? we definitely aren't equating for the fact that protein was low. So in this particular context, we have seen in other literature that when protein is low, carbohydrates do provide sort of an anti-catabolic effect. So the only reason perhaps the low carb group lost so much muscle was because their protein was so low. Now, what about the strength piece? That's valid. We do understand in other contexts and other studies with like CrossFit, when volume is high enough, Carbohydrates do matter, but not in the short term. They matter for, for keeping glycogen stores high. But if you're training at relatively low volume, probably doesn't matter. 
But if you're looking to get that extra five, 10% performance for, yeah, then in strength stuff and explosive stuff, carbohydrates are gonna matter, especially when your volume's high. But if you look at like Jeff Volek's work and, and Finney's work, we do understand also that over time, subjects get more fat adapted. And when that happens, you're low carb for a long time, your body gets efficient at creating carbs from other substrates and can put it into glycogen storage almost just as efficiently as if you were straight up eating carbs. But I'm not here to just justify low carb, right? Because we need to understand more stuff here. First, let's look at a study that was published in the journal Nutrition and Metabolism. They had subjects go very low carb, high fat, or high carb, low fat. And they had them try to get in like a 500 calorie deficit. What they found is that despite trying to put them in a deficit, the very low carb group ended up eating 1800 calories. So ended up eating 300 calories more than the high carb group, which ate 1500 calories. Interestingly enough though, the low carb group, despite higher calories, oxidized more fat. They burned more fat. Not only did they burn more fat, but they burned more visceral fat as a ratio to their total fat that they lost too. And interestingly about this study is that protein was higher. So it seems as though when protein's high, the fat loss aspect doesn't seem to degrade muscle and it also seems to be still more of an advantage for fat loss versus higher carb. But where does the high carb play in? Because if you look at evidence with high carb, you see studies published about CrossFitters and other high performers that the more carbohydrates they consume, basically the higher performance up to a certain point, like 10 to 15% increases in performance. But that's with pretty high volume stuff. So we do know from a performance perspective that yes, the carbohydrates will probably help. There's even some evidence now that just swishing carbohydrates in your mouth can have an effect on performance. So we're not entirely sure if it's glycogen related or if it's psychosomatic or what it is. But carbohydrates over the long haul for high amounts of volume can improve performance. There's no one really denying that anymore. But if you're just an average gym goer, it doesn't seem to make much of a difference. But for muscle building, one thing we've seen is that when protein is lower, carbohydrates can be anti-catabolic. But protein and carbohydrates both do one very important thing. What they do is they increase mTOR kinase. So they increase, so these mechanistic growth signals for cells to actually like grow. So because carbs can have that insulin signaling, insulin mediated sort of signaling, one could argue that they're definitely more anabolic. However, when you look at it from a ribosomal aspect, like our RNA, which gets into the weeds, we've seen recent literature that shows that carbs don't aid in muscle building. But what they do is they do increase insulin levels and insulin levels might make it so that you can build more muscle. Because we do see in some anecdotal evidence that bodybuilders that use copious amounts of insulin can put on more muscle, right? So we see it in extreme cases. So perhaps eating carbohydrates will lead to more muscle building. And that makes some sense, right? So if protein is high and carbs are high, you'll build muscle, but it's also pretty evident that it's going to be harder to lose fat that way. So with that, we need to jump over really quick on another side of the performance spectrum and look at VO2 max with fat for a second, because this is really interesting and it's kind of a tiebreaker here. So this study was published in the journal Sports Science and Medicine. So what this study did is it took two groups of people and for six weeks it had them eat very low carb or very high carb with equal everything else, okay? Now, what they found with this, when they had them do VO2 max testing or four separate five kilometer time trials, performance effects were about the same. High carb, low carb, they performed about the same. No real difference on the time trial or the VO2 max. But here's what's really wild. What they found is that those that were in the low carb group ended up oxidizing significantly more fat. As a matter of fact, 94% oxidation of carbs in the high carb group compared to 65% oxidation of carbs in the low carb group. So the low carb group used much more fat even though they had equal performance outcomes on their VO2 max. So they performed at the same level, same energy demand, same output, but oxidizing more fat. Case in point, they're gonna burn more fat. Some arguments could be had that maybe the carbohydrate group would have more in their tank to push harder, maybe. But the bottom line is the fat group was burning more fat. And here's a quote from an advances in medical sciences study. The maximum rates of fat oxidation is approximately 0.6 grams per minute in a high carb group. And with low carb, high fat, it increases to 1.54 grams per minute. 
we're talking almost a threefold increase in the rate of fat oxidation. And this has to do with lower levels of insulin at the time, insulin's not bad, and mitochondrial adaptation. I noticed this with my own VO2 max test. I didn't even reach my RER until I was close, my RER over one, until I was close to the end of my VO2 max test. And I ended up scoring almost a 60, a 59.9, but Dr. Andy Galpin officially stamped me as a 60. Point is, is that I was low carb, I was actually fasted. I performed great on an anaerobic VO2 max test when pushing it to that limit, but my fat oxidation was sky high. So with that, and I preserve muscle just fine. What do we take away from all of this? How do we put it together? High carb is probably better for bulking, but know that it will attenuate some of your fat loss. It actually will, you might even gain some fat. It's gonna be harder to stay lean, let's put it that way. Okay, low carb is definitely better for cutting in this context. And we see bodybuilders do this all the time. They come off the carbs when it's time to prep for a show. And you know what? As much as we bag on them sometimes because they're funny, I've been one and I see them all the time. They get shredded and they know what they're doing. As long as you don't ruin your metabolism, but there's other factors at play like water manipulation, things that may not be good, right? All that aside, they know what they're doing with that and it works. But I propose something different. I propose that we go in these miniature bulks and cuts throughout the course of the week or the course of the month. One week of high carb with some bulking, one week of low carb with some cutting. Nothing out there shows that we cannot do this. Nothing out there shows that we cannot build muscle and burn fat in the same month by periodizing our bulks and our cuts into shorter timeframes versus going very high carb, developing maybe small levels of insulin resistance or at least tolerance, and then having to gain fat and then trim it off. Why can't we go one week or two weeks of high carb, higher carb, build muscle, and then two weeks of more focus on increased fat oxidation and maintaining muscle and burning some fat? getting the best of both worlds, or better yet, even in the daily, focus on, okay, I can go very low carb, high fat by essentially fasting, because my body's pulling from my body fat and I'm essentially low carb because I'm not eating, and then go higher carb during our eating period. Like nothing says the clock is, the body's looking at a 24 hour clock. Like it doesn't say, okay, you had X amount of carbs today, so that's your, that's your carb count, you're a high carb person. What if you're low carb in the morning by not eating and fasting? That's the whole premise there increasing fat oxidation via some fasting or increasing fat oxidation via you know, caloric restriction, and then put it into a surplus with more carbohydrates as well to induce muscle growth. I think on the daily, it might be a little bit much, but you can certainly do it on the weekly. And there's nothing to say that having a little metabolic flexibility, although it's kind of a cheeky term sometimes, you know, is a bad thing. Being able to flip flop back and forth between high carb and low carb without feeling doggish or sluggish either direction is really the goal, right? I justify it as like, I want to be able to run and oxidize fat. And I also want to be able to lift and oxidize carbs. I don't want to be a one trick pony. So this just gives evidence that carbs probably do help us bulk more, but low carb probably does help us cut more as much as it might be hard to swallow sometimes. I'll see you tomorrow.